Welcome to BM Blog's coverage of KubeCon Cloud Native Con 2024 taking place in Salt Lake City, Utah. And today I have the pleasure of having Stephen Frasetti, who's the field CTO at Mirantis. Welcome. Thank you. Thanks for having me. Maybe you can start by telling us a little bit, you know, give us kind of an overview of the company for people that haven't heard of Mirantis. Absolutely, yeah. Mirantis builds uh, strategic open infrastructure solutions um, for large global organizations uh, dealing with complex uh, cost conflicts, risks, and vendor lock-in. Uh, our customers are typically uh, large organizations doing global business, facing challenges um, along that way with cost, risks, and lock-in. Uh, what they're looking for from us and, and what we provide is, you know, high level of control and visibility into the, how they use their technology so that they can chart their own independent course for optimization. Steven, that's a great uh, overview of the company. Uh, we're here today, obviously, we're talking about the KubeCon Cloud Native Con event coming up. Could you uh, tell us a little bit of how Marantis uh, fits into the uh, KubeCon audience, like, you know, where and how does your company and technology fit into things for those folks? Absolutely. Yeah. So Mirantis is the only independent open source focused provider in the Kubernetes space, um, as evident by the latest Gartner uh, report. Um, unlike the open core vendors, we're all in on pure open source. You know, we don't lock users into specific stacks or platforms or proprietary OSs. Instead, we help them unlock freedom to optimize across diverse clouds and infrastructures. Uh, you know, our open source Kubernetes based platforms enable control and visibility across data centers, clouds and edge environments, helping customers gain ability, manage their costs and simplify operations all while allowing them to use the best technology for their particular use cases. Um, you know, this allows our solutions, our Mirantis open source solutions to continue to work even if customers switch providers, which uh, we like to effectively call uh, ourselves an unvendor. We have a model based on delivering agility, cost management, and operational simplicity that's open to all of our customers. Now, for the... Uh people attending the show, what are some of the specific problems that Mirantis solves for them? And maybe you can give us a couple of use cases. Sure. Uh, you know, we address complex real world challenges of infrastructure and diversity and lock-in. Uh, the very common use case today involves hosting virtual machines more effectively and more efficiently alongside containers. You know, our new Mirantis Kubernetes Engine 4, MKE, we call it, uh, let's users combine Mirantis validated open source components like KubeVert for managing VMs, uh, FinOps tools for cost tracking and optimization, as well as observability and compliance tools. And we do all of this in a self-managed use case optimized platform. Each one of those components is composable, adaptable, and reusable, making it easy to apply in diverse environments with different regulatory requirements and security needs, regardless of location. Now, if somebody came to your booth at KubeCon and you were diving into uh, a bit deeper into the technology, how would you, you know, talk about the technology to those folks and what kind of things would you tell them that, uh, you know, makes Mirantis unique or differentiated in the market? Yeah, so what I tell people is that Mirantis enables organizations to manage technology flexibly. Um, you know, we, our, we use Kubernetes as the universal automation and management layer for all our platforms. So we offer a broad portfolio, all based on open source technologies. We have Mirantis OpenStack for resilient infrastructure. We have Mirantis Container Cloud for multi-cluster management. Like I said, we have Mirantis Kubernetes Engine 4 for composable Kubernetes. In addition, we also have K0S and Cosmotron for lightweight multi-cluster needs across environments. And of course, we have Lens Desktop, the popular Kubernetes dashboard offering. In addition to that, Mirantis offers SLA-bound support, enterprise-grade, along with managed services, reducing the need for customers to build internal expertise or manage complicated DIY setups. Now, this could be a little redundant, but um, what do you think, you know, talking with your customers, 
are the biggest challenges that they're facing and how is Morantis helping them solve those challenges? Yeah, so in speaking with customers most recently, one of the major challenges that all of the organizations today are facing is complexity and costs of today's cloud and Kubernetes environments. And the way that Morantis handles this is, you know, we have an open source vendor neutral solution that lets our users streamline operations while staying flexible and selecting the components they need or they've already uh, provided an investment into, whether that's VM management, FinOps, or compliance and regulatory solutions. Uh, with MKE4 specifically and our professional services, customers really can simplify tech management without a heavy in-house expertise, all while leveraging Kubernetes as an adaptable abstraction layer. Now, KubeCon is one of those uh, big events where vendors launch something new. Uh, without asking you to give away, you know, any trade secrets or you know, uh, telling, uh, tell, talking out of school, so to speak, are, are you launching anything new that you can talk about or or to hint at? Um, and if not, have you has Marantis uh, made any recent announcements uh, that you're going to be talking about at the show that you can share with the audience? Absolutely. Yeah. So I, I kind of let the cat out of the bag in an earlier question, but we are launching Marantis Kubernetes Engine 4, so MKE4, which is our composable enterprise grade Kubernetes platform with validated add ons for VM management, FinOps, observability, compliance, and more. In addition, we'll also be demonstrating our open source K0 solution on Ampere processors and System 76 hardware supporting generative AI workloads. You could visit us at our booth for demos and insights into this approach to open source Kubernetes. And you, you never know, another announcement might be happening soon. <laughs> Not sure. So um, going into 2025, um, obviously AI has always has been a big issue that people have been looking at ways to leverage. Is there things that um, Rantis is looking into 2025 in the future um, to incorporate into your product? Absolutely. I mean, AI is a massive, uh, you know, theme that we're going to be hearing about and how it's integrating. Um, you know, our focus is on Kubernetes, multi-cluster and multi-cloud management at global scale. Uh, we envision Kubernetes multi-cluster as a simpler, more secure alternative to the large multi-purpose clusters that we see currently. Our future products are going to combine that composability element with scaled up declarative cluster management, which will create a unified open source solution for Kubernetes platform management across any infrastructure for any workload. The challenge of course to this is doing it at scale. So what our next generation of products will do is comp combine that composability approach, letting users easily define open source platforms optimized around workload type and use case specific with scaled up Kubernetes native declarative cluster creation and lifecycle management, all leveraging cluster API. This will result in more of a complete open source solution portfolio and composable ecosystem for converged Kubernetes platform definitions and management of any infrastructure from private to public cloud out to the edge for all of the workloads, including AI that we're seeing today. Now I'm a, I'm a visual learner uh, and I know many of our audience members are the same. Uh, is there any way you can give us a, a demo of some of the uh, stuff that you've uh, you've talked about? Yeah, I have a demo prepared of MKE that'll go over the ins and outs so everyone could see that. Great. Organizations today manage diverse workloads across multiple platforms and clouds, battling complexity and vendor lock-in. Mirantis Kubernetes Engine is designed to address these challenges. It's an open-source, enterprise-grade Kubernetes solution based on K-Zeros, a minimal CNCF-certified Kubernetes distribution designed for simplicity and scalability. In this demo, we'll create an MKE4 cluster, access the cluster from its UI, and configure it by adding new components. So let's get started. To create an MKE4 cluster, we need the MKE CLI, MKE CTL. The instructions to install MKE CTL are available in the documentation. We'll create the cluster in AWS EC2. The documentation also provides example Terraform scripts to create the AWS virtual machines. The next step is to create the cluster. 
MKE4 is configured and deployed from an MKE declarative configuration file, which references Miranda's hardened, composable open source components. We can create this configuration file using MKEctl. This is a sample configuration file which lists configuration for all the default components that Mirantis ships with, including authentication, ingress, container networking, monitoring, backup, and other features. There's a place in the file for adding hosts and sections for adding additional components to the cluster. I have an MKE4 configuration file with hosts configured already that I'll use to create this cluster. MKE4 declarative configuration is customizable within guardrails. You can modify the file to include or exclude open source components made composable by Mirantis, so you end up with a platform definition that closely meets requirements of your use case. Configuration is also idempotent, so you can add features to a deployed cluster later by adjusting the declarative configuration and reapplying it. And those features and services get added to the cluster without breaking it, in most cases without disrupting workloads, and in a way that can be rolled back if issues are encountered. As new components and add-ons become available, it will be possible for users to select these in configuring a full MKE4 platform or add them to an existing platform later, a huge accelerator and risk reducer for platform engineering. OK, so I have MKECTL applied the declaration, and my cluster is created. And we have a URL where we can access the MKE Web UI. The MKE Web UI lets you configure Kubernetes resources, map secrets, examine deployments, replica sets, ingresses, nodes, services, etc. MKE4's UI also enables user management. You can create new users and assign roles and permissions to these users. As you can see, we can also use third-party authentication systems like SAML or OIDC or LDAP with MKE4. And there are various other admin settings. All the components installed in MKE4 are monitored by the MKE operator. Any accidental changes in the cluster are automatically reconciled back to the declaratively configured state. For example, if we delete one of the deployments, the MKE operator will recognize that and it will reconcile back to the known cluster state and recreate the deleted component. Users can also add new components by adding add-ons to the MKE config. Let's add a new component, say MKE Virtualization, which is included with MKE4 and lets you host virtual machines using open source kubevert. In this case, we're installing kubevert in the namespace VMs. So after adding the add-on sections, we just run mkectl apply on the mke configuration namespace called vms and create deployments and other kubevert resources within that namespace. So now all the components for kubevert have been installed. The configuration drift management also applies to add-ons the user installs later. So if we now change the configuration manually here, for example, let's say we change the number of replicas from default 2 to 1, and we apply it, and the MKE operator should reconcile it back to the two operators again. Well, Stephen, thanks for showing us that great demo. And uh, before we let you go, obviously, folks who are going to be attending uh, KubeCon, Cloud Native Con, uh, we highly recommend they they add Marantis to their uh, you know must see list to come by and check you out in person. But for folks who may not be able to go to the show, how can they find out more information about the company, the technology, and the things that we talked about today? Absolutely. If you're at the show, stop by booth R22. We'll have demos and products. Um, you know, we'll be showing K0S. We'll be showing MKE4. Uh, you'll be able to see everything that that I talked about here today. Um, well, like I said, we'll also be showing uh, generative AI, AI workload demos on the Ampere CPUs, and I know we're doing a bunch of giveaways. If you're not able to make the conference, easiest and best thing to do is start at our website, Marantis.com, and reach out to us. We will uh, showcase and explain how we are the unvendor. Great. Well, Brian and I look forward to seeing you at the show. Thank you. Thank you.